third. Oh, that's a neutral. Can't find them, grind them. <laughs> Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. A few years ago, getting your old internal combustion car converted to an electric vehicle would have seemed like a daunting, unrealistic task that most likely wasn't even an option. But today, things have changed and we're here to get the lowdown on EV conversions from some of the best in the business. So I'm here with Michael Bream, the owner of EV West, a company which in the last five years has come to be one of the top EV conversion companies in the country. Big five years. Yeah. How did this all come so about? We were just uh, some hobbyists, just having fun. We wanted to build a race car, the BMW yep. E36 M3. And you put that in the Pikes Peak. Yeah. We're like, okay, what's the best race that's, that has an electric class that's been around for a while? And Pikes Peak was the natural fit. It's the second oldest race in America. We actually took it really easy in the car. And when we finally got our time, we couldn't believe that we actually set a record for the uh, street legal electric class. That's incredible. Yeah. And you beat some pretty stiff competition while you were there. Yeah, you know, talk about beginner's luck. Right? We had these guys from Yokohama, we had Monster Tajima, total heroes to us. And then at the end of the day, we ended up beating them. And I'm, mean, geez, I get goosebumps just talking <laughs> just about, thinking about yeah. it. You know, the car has been really successful. We've raced the car and some autocross events. You guys have also done a Baja and are looking at doing more races. Yeah, we've done the Mexican 1000. We're the first guys to ever run a sanctioned off road race in an electric vehicle. We were charging along the path and we kind of figured that was a little tough. We're going back to the Baja this year yep. and uh, we have a new angle. We're going to take all pre charged batteries down there and hot swap them and uh, we hope to be really competitive. And so you've taken the lessons that you've learned building the M3 right, to what right. you guys are doing, which is converting customer cars right. into fully electric street legal vehicles. Right. So when a car comes into the shop, do we just simply open the hood and start pulling <laughs> things out? Is that how it begins? Yeah, pretty much. Drop the motor. I mean, it's messy. You know, yep. it requires a lot of mopping on the shop floor and stuff right. afterwards. And we try and get that done, just get it out. If you kind of look at it, you know, in a broad scope, the, the whole process is fairly simple, but the devil is in the details, yep. right? The aesthetics and the making it really safe and really reliable. I think that's what we excel at. When you take out things like the gas tank, the radiator, right. drivetrain, right. uh, and the engine, right. replace it with a battery pack and an electric motor, which right. is generally smaller. Do you end up with extra space within the vehicle? Yeah, it works out about the same right, right now. And the weight of the components right now, we usually add maybe 100, 200 pounds to the overall weight of the vehicle. Okay. Uh, but that's changing. Just in the five years that we've been in this, we've seen our battery density get a lot better. And yep. so, you know, now we're getting more range and we're putting less uh, weight into the car. What type of battery are you leaning towards more when it comes to... Well, all of the lithium ion chemistries, yep. and it's a real promising time. I mean, uh, you know, there's so many uh, battery breakthroughs, you know, MIT, all these guys are working on some really great stuff. Is there cars that you see that have come in where you're like, oh, I really don't feel like massacring this car right now because it's such a beauty? Yeah, yeah. We had an NFL guy come in, he wanted to do a 458, and we just told him there's no, yeah, right, same reaction. Yeah. <laughs> I can't touch a flat crank V12, right? Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> it's good the way yeah. it is. Yeah. As new parts become available, as right. technology improves, right. is there possibilities to come back in, swap over components? Seeing the advancements in battery technology, this is something you might uh, do a conversion now and then maybe 10 years down the road, put a battery pack in there that's a quarter the size and maybe three times the range, right? Wow. And yeah. you're going to improve the performance of the car because you're going to make the car lighter and more powerful at the same time. Yeah. In the garage right now, we've got the Ferrari 308. Right there, Jeep. The Jeep. Uh, 69 Carmen Ghia. We got an 80 Spider. Uh, we got the M3. We got a 57 bus out there. We got a 58 Ragtop, a 65 912, a 7302. I can keep going. So I'm going to be going in the Carmen Ghia, am I? Yeah. Yep. super excited yep. to have a drive in these because yeah. I've driven many electric cars, but I've never driven one that's yeah. got such a classic yeah. look. What Michael's done with this car is essentially take a 1969 Carmen Ghia, remove the powertrain, traditional combustion engine, replace it with batteries and an electric motor. <laughs> probably wondering why I'm driving this old car quite like this. Well, it's because Michael in particular asked me to drive it this way to show how capable a car that's this old can be without anything going wrong. Electric engines are just so reliable that you can absolutely beat on them and nothing untoward is going to happen. And so far, I think he's right. 
So just like in a regular car, you have to change the gears if you want the torque. Like first, we'll give you more torque, then second, then third. But you can, if you're sitting in traffic, just take off in third, and it's not going to do any damage at all. It's just not going to give you the punch that take off in first will give you. And with an electric engine, you've got no worries about this thing blowing up. You can literally put it into neutral, like I'm going to do now, hold the pedal flat to the floor, and if you can hear that, that's 6,500 RPM. It will never go beyond that. It will never blow a piston. It will never explode. We're not doing this really so much because we're we're the hardcore environmentalists or we're trying got to you. save the earth. We're doing this because it's horsepower. I mean, I got a car out there that can produce, you know, almost 900 foot pounds of torque instantly. Yeah. And you're pretty hard pressed to do that with combustion. You're so. right on the money because I, I always think about this. It's like people don't realize that we actually have the potential to be faster and be better right. using electric technology. Right. Speed doesn't care about politics, right? You don't yeah. look at the timer and like, hey, that's what, what, you know, hydrogen or it doesn't matter. Say a car of this particular size with an engine right. that wasn't really known for its grunt and horsepower. Right, right. Can we see an improvement on certain vehicles? Oh yeah, I mean that's our rule. Like if we can't at least double your torque and horsepower, we won't touch the car. Specs wise, it's got 120 foot pounds of torque, it's got about 100 horsepower, and it's got a top speed of over 100 miles an hour. The conversion itself, $30,000. So it's not entirely for everybody, but if you've got a classic car like this that you want to drive around as a daily driver without any real worries of the thing falling apart or blowing up or dumping a bunch of money into it weekend after weekend, then, you know, this could be a solution for you. When it comes to the cost, is there an incentive from the government? Because we do get uh, credits to a certain right. extent by buying an EV vehicle. Yeah, so I don't know if the politicians are listening. There should be, you know, but there isn't. Not for us. Yeah, there's no incentives right. for us, really. I mean, for us, again, it's just cars. We're just doing it. It's a love of cars. And yep. we got these cars like this, you know, a 50-plus-year-old car. Yeah. Uh, I think we can both agree we want to see this car still rolling around 50 years from Absolutely. now. And there's probably a better chance of that on electric than there is on the on uh, combustion. Traditional yeah. engine. Yeah. The world's changing, right? Like, yep. And we can't control it. You and I have no control over it. We can just make it fun along the way. So maybe it's not such a crazy idea after all to take the old pet project and turn it into an electric vehicle for the 21st century. And while it's still kind of expensive, we're hoping those prices will lower over time because we'd love to see this be an option for everyone. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.